In this video, the master instructors from Best Incorporated will demonstrate the procedure for installing a component with flat, gullwing-shaped leads. The function of the component is not important when considering what technique to use for installation. The techniques in this video can be used for any component that has flat, gullwing-shaped leads. As with all surface mount installation procedures, the first step is to thoroughly clean the mounting site with an appropriate solvent and stiff bristled brush. Wipe the area dry with a lint-free cloth. Align the component to the work site. Be sure to align the orientation marking on the component with the corresponding alignment mark on the assembly. While some misalignment is allowed, it's a best practice to center the component leads on each land. Be careful when moving the component. The leads of these components can be delicate. Too much pressure on the leads can bend or otherwise damage those leads. When the component is aligned, the component will need to be tack soldered into place before further processing. Apply a small amount of flux to the corner leads of one side of the component. Apply a small amount of solder to the iron tip. Then, gently hold the component in place while the solder is applied at the corner lead. Reorient the board after the component has cooled and access the diagonal corner lead. After verifying the continued alignment of the component, repeat the process of fluxing the leads, holding the component in place, and tack one corner lead. The instructor will now demonstrate three different methods of soldering the remaining leads. First will be the point-to-point -point method. Apply flux to the entire row of the leads to be soldered. Using the land width as a guide, place a small diameter solder wire at the toe of the lead approximately equal to the width of the lead. Beginning with a lead that was not tack soldered, contact the solder, the lead, and the land with the soldering iron. Allow sufficient time for the solder to flow along the sides and toward the heel of the component. The critical connection points for this lead type are at the heel and along the sides. Continue soldering the leads one at a time until all leads on the side of the component have been soldered. Orient the board as needed to access the next side of the component. The next method demonstrated will be the multi-lead top-of-foot application method. As with the point-to-point -point method, apply flux to the entire row of leads. Place the small diameter solder wire across the row of leads with the wire resting on the top of the foot of each lead. Using a single-sided chisel soldering iron or other similarly shaped tip with a larger thermal mass, contact the solder and the top of the foot of two or more leads. Gently sweep down and away from the component body. The solder will flow along the lead and land to form the soldered connection. Be careful not to apply too much pressure to the leads or there may be a risk of damage. The third method that will be demonstrated is known as drag soldering. Once again, reorient the board to access the next side of the component. This time, ensure that the board is in a position so the leads are perpendicular to the direction of the drag path. Using a single-sided chisel or similar tip, apply just enough solder to cover the face of the iron. If the tip has a concave pocket, the cup will need to be filled with enough solder to form a small bubble. Place the iron at the end of the row of leads with the face of the iron parallel to the board surface. In a smooth, steady motion, slide the iron along the row of leads. Allow the solder to transfer to each lead in the row. Be sure not to apply any pressure on the leads of the component or there may be a risk of bending or otherwise damaging the leads. When the leads of the component have been soldered, clean the area with an appropriate solvent and stiff bristled brush. Make sure to scrub between the leads and attempt to have the solvent flow under the component body. Wipe the area dry with a lint-free cloth. Any solvent remaining under the component body may need to be removed with static-free compressed air. Inspect the assembly according to the IPCA Acceptability of Electronic Assemblies document. The IPCA 610 groups electronic assemblies into three classes. These classes are based on the intended end-use environment for the assembly. Class 1, General Electronic Products, are those where the major requirement is that the assembly is functional. 
Class 2, dedicated service products, are assemblies where continued performance and extended life are desired, but not critical. Typically, the end-use environment would not cause failures. Class 3, high-performance or harsh environment products, are assemblies in which high-performance and performance on demand are critical. Downtime cannot be tolerated, or the extreme environment may be uncommonly harsh. According to the IPCA 610, on a Class 3 assembly, each lead may have up to 25% of the lead width, or 0.5 millimeters, whichever is less, off the side of the land, as long as the lead does not extend to where there is a potential of shorting. On gullwing leads, where the foot length is less than three times the width of the lead, 100% of the lead must be soldered along the side of each lead. If the lead length is more than three times the lead width, then 75%, or three times the lead width, whichever is greater, may be soldered along the side of the leads. The connection at the heel of the lead, the heel fillet, must be at least 75% the width of the lead and must climb up the lead to a point at least equal to the thickness of the solder and the thickness of the lead foot. As a maximum, the solder may flow up to the bend of the knee of the lead, but solder may not touch the body of the component or the lead seal. Visit and follow us on our YouTube channel, Soldering Geek, for more videos. For training classes, supplies, and more, visit our website, www.solder.net.